You're listening to the We Are Libertarians Network. Learn more at wearelibertarians.com. I will read both of these uh, ordinance amendments first. Uh, in order to submit the Henry County Code, whereas on June 13, 2018, the Board of Commissioners of Henry County initiated and proposed to amend the text to the Henry County Zoning Code by repealing section 154.001 through 154.107 of the Henry County Code and replacing such provisions with the text set forth on Exhibit A attached to the resolution. And, whereas on August 7th, 2018, the Henry County Planning Commission conducted a public hearing on a proposed and voted to certify the proposed whole to the Board of Commissioners with no recommendation. And, whereas the Board of Commissioners of Henry County has has determined that the Henry County Zoning Code should be amended, amended as completed by the proposal. Now, therefore, it be ordered as follows, section 154.001 through 154.107 of the Henry County Code are hereby repealed. Sections 154.001 through 154.107 are hereby replaced with the text set forth on the, the document attached to this ordinance and marked as Exhibit A. And the text set, shall set forth on the attached Exhibit A. It's hereby made an ordinance in the county. The text set forth on it shall become part of the county code and be effective upon passage uh, and publication of the requirements by law. An ordinance amended in the Henry County Code, whereas on June 13, 2018, the Board of Commissioners Henry County, Indiana, initiated a proposal to amend the text of the Henry County Zoning Code by adding text set forth in Exhibit B attached to the resolution to the beginning of Section 150.165A of the Henry County Code. And whereas on August 7, 2018, the County Planning Commission conducted a public hearing on a proposal and voted to certify the proposal to the Board of Commissioners with a favorable. And, whereas the Board of Commissioners of Henry County has determined that the Henry County Zoning Code should be amended as completed by the proposal. Now, therefore, 
be in order as follows. The text set forth on the document attached as Exhibit B shall be added to the beginning of Section 150.165A of the Hennigan Code. The text set forth on Exhibit B shall be effective upon passage as required by law. The publication is required by law. We have previously held numbers of public meetings on the subject of which include meetings that allow for unlimited public open comment. We have held meetings where the existing WIX proposal was reviewed line by line. We have received hundreds of emails and letters on the subject. The commissioners have spoken with countless residents of the county and other residents regarding WIX. We have reviewed thousands of pages of written materials on WIX. In short, it is my belief that we have provided ample opportunity for input and study on the subject before proposing revisions to the county code. Nevertheless, we will allow a brief 30 minute of additional public comments on this issue prior to taking action on the proposed revisions. We will allow each speaker two minutes to address the commissioners. This allowing uh, the maximum amount of people that can speak. Each speaker will be asked to observe the following guidelines. <coughs> this is an opportunity to address. It is not a press conference, cross-examination, or debate. Questions directed to the commissioners or others in attendance will not be answered. Comments should be related to the proposed vision, revision of the code and should not be personal tax on any person. Persons, please refrain from clapping, cheering, or other make, making noise during uh, or after the person's comments. Each speaker, speaker should state his or her name and county of residence prior to the beginning remarks. If these guidelines are not followed, the property board is not maintained. The commissioners may close the public comment. Period. At this time, I have, according to the top of the wall, six thirty-five. So, anybody would like to speak?
by the big Blue River Wind Energy Company and the ordinance that you allowed them to propose to you. You have the opportunity to correct these and many other problems which I have pointed out to you. Once you make up changes, that recommendation would be sent to the Planning Commission, which they have to address within 45 days. And then it comes back to you, just like the current proposed ordinance. So it wouldn't take a long time to make this right. And as I said before, you need to amend this ordinance to make it safe, protect the health and property values and property rights of the people of Henry County. It's the right thing to do.
I would implore you to look again at the setbacks and realize I don't know how many of you are going to live to next to one of these 1,500 feet away. Um, I don't know if anybody that's voted for these is going to live that close to them. I'm not going to Florida this, this winter. I'm not able to escape that, like some are. And um, I would implore you to look at this again. It's mainly the setbacks. Thank you. Hello, uh, Herman Chair uh, from Canada. Um, the thing that strikes me about this ordinance is it is tyranny. They're stealing my property rights by running this setback up across my property to my house. It is tyranny. You're stealing the value of my property from me. It's tyranny. I'm extremely upset. If this, this was several hundred years ago, um, the nature of the uprising that you see would be vastly different. We're here peaceably to ask you to please do not oppress this county with this tyranny. My name is Phil Gibson, Stony Creek Township. I just heard a cricket. I just heard a cricket go off. One of the things that you won't hear in a field of industrial wind turbines is crickets. Why? Because of the noise level. We have to be very careful with that noise level. We have to be very careful with that setback. We have to be very careful with where we position these so-called wonderful turbines. This thing is greed driven. That's the only thing that drives this, is money. Pay attention and listen, because there's a lot of people out there that have done a lot of work, a lot of homework. And they know what they're talking about. And there's a lot of damages that can be done by these things. demonstrated your knowledge of the issues by writing into the revised West Ordinance 2,640 foot 
from municipalities, nursing homes, and hospitals. How much was that? I believe it was 2,640. Am I incorrect? Somebody else here. 2,500. Thank you for the correction. 2,500 setback for municipalities, <coughs> hospitals, and nursing homes. You are blatantly discriminating against the 20,000 rural residents who have the same population as nursing homes, hospitals, and municipalities. The aged, the sick, the weak, the uneducated. You know there are health and safety issues. The arrest ordinance proposed is a reduced setback from what our previous ordinance has. And I believe that you have written that ordinance to punish the people who are against wind turbines in Henry County. Make no mistake, we will not forget what you have. Make no mistake, we will not forget. And if it does happen, 
And it could very well happen right here in Henry County. And imagine this on a windy day, in the right conditions, going right towards your house or someone you love right here in this community. And their house comes down. Looks so like killed. I mean, if you research this, I don't see how you come up with 1,500 feet from the base of the foundation when it should. And all reason be from the property line, because if you go on the internet and Google it, you'll find from Europe, all across this country, people have realized communities, I mean, county commissioners, states, countries have realized that these setbacks need to be from the property line to protect the people. I mean, setting from a residential is it, obsolete. All you have to do is look. And I hope tonight that you will change this and go from the property line. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Kelly Marlotta. I'm in Henry County, Dudley Township, and I just want to ask, my husband and I farm, lived here for quite a few years. I do not appreciate 1,550 feet being measured from the foundation of our homes. 1,550 feet, if that's what you want to measure, measure it from the property line, not the foundation of a home. I don't know what else to say. There's it's been asked before, but I object to 1,500 feet from the foundation of anyone's home. Frank Zyle, Jefferson Township. Um, I, too, when this first started a few years back, we went to several places, Randolph County, Elwood area, Tipton area, and we too spoke with numerous residents. We randomly selected them. We made sure that we also talked to people that had some on their property. There were more complaints than just it doesn't look nice. There was a young girl that couldn't do her homework in her house because of the shadow cover. There was another lady that had issues with migraines. There are people over in Randolph County that complain about the sound, that it had to have porches built on their house to block the shadow flicker and such. This is not made up. I also question how you can measure setback from a moving target. As Amy, as Amy pointed out at the last meeting, when those blades are rotated, that changes your setback distance. So in actuality, part of the time, we're going to have less than 1,500, depending on the direction that those blades are pointed. I also question how you can have zoning from the edge of town, but yet my foundation. Why are the people that live at the edge of the town, why do they have more rights than I do? I also want to uh, make sure and reiterate and bring up this was presented to the commissioners two years ago, a year and a half ago. But yes, it does impact property values because we have the loss of the sale of the second home that we were trying to sell. When we disclosed that there was a chance of wind turbine in, you know, industry coming into the community, they had made a full offer. And when we disclosed that, they withdrew their offer. It was several months later until we finally sold it at a lesser amount. We had to continue to pay on the property taxes. We had to continue to pay on the mortgage. So we're losing money, not just at the lower sale price, but also the extended expenses and bills that we had to pay. So, and I can, and I still have copies of that if you guys would like it, but you all have been presented with that before. So again, these things that, you know, oh, it's just an appearance. No, there's a whole lot more to it. How do we measure sound when we don't have the capability to do that now? Our old ordinance. I asked the health department and I asked the emergency manager, do we have the type of equipment to measure the sound properly? And they said, no, we don't have it. They said, is there anybody else that would be a county employee that would have it? No. So how are we going to measure the sound? We have an, we have an unenforceable set of rules here. It needs to be reviewed again to look at the equity and the ability to enforce. And if these things are so great, 
why doesn't every county in Indiana have them? Why are counties instead increasing their setbacks, putting moratoriums on? If this mm -hmm. is such a great thing, why is it, why aren't they everywhere? I would ask myself that. Martin Toby Harrison. Um, I am a deep red state conservative. I am as deep red state conservative as you can find. And I look across this nation right now, there's a wave in the nation that the government is giving it back to the people. And the people have a voice in this country. And you guys don't carry an R after you read for this office. And I ask that you look at that R and look at the way that the people, that that R is representing back to the people of this country, of this state, and of this county. And I was a little taken back a couple of weeks ago at the planning when this speech gave a heartfelt request. I may not agree with a lot of things that she has, but she gave a heartfelt request that you guys look at and have concerns with the setbacks. And when I talk to people after you guys afterwards, and I talk to at the county fair, nobody paid any to that. I mean, it was, it was like it was, didn't even happen. And no comment was given back on it, and it was like, well, you know, it's too late for that now. And I thought her, her request was very sincere. Thank you. That's in North Jefferson Township. Um, he sort of stole my thunder, but that was something I wanted to follow up about because that's a question I posed to the commissioners two weeks ago. The planning commission, Mrs. Beach, Mrs. Clark, both indicated that their no recommendation vote was with the caveat that setbacks would be examined. They expressed deep concern over that. Mrs. Beach, I don't think they on the spot, was that correct? Am I understanding you correctly? No comment? Okay. <laughs> Um, I don't want to get in trouble here, I don't want to violate the procedures, but I did ask, and, and Mr. Yannis, you did indicate we would talk to Mrs. Beach. Mr. Baker, I think you did as well. Did that, am I allowed to ask if that conversation took place? Okay, are, are you too able to speak to that in any way? To address her concerns? I did speak to her. So, I'm not trying to get from here, I'm just trying to understand. Is there anything else? That's, that's your answer. That's your answer. I did speak to her. Okay. Um, I just want to add one other point. If everybody in this room is wearing white t shirts and holding signs, if they're wrong, if we're all wrong about rent, and it's a wonderful thing for our community, okay, maybe we look silly, maybe we're embarrassed. Okay, I was on the wrong side of that. Okay. But if you guys are wrong, if they're wrong, if the East Siders are wrong, this is going to be an absolute disaster. All right, Ron Romine, Joe Town. I just want to make this real uh, quick and simple. After what I read in the paper with your three comments, it seems to me that you feel that infrasound and uh, shadow flicker are things that just don't happen. Um, you chose to not put that in our ordinance, yet the wind companies choose to put that in their contracts that the farmers or anybody who experiences that cannot complain without being sued. So that's a little puzzling to me that the wind companies protect themselves, but you guys don't want to protect the citizens of this county. Just throwing that out there. If it doesn't happen, then why are, if you're so confident it doesn't, doesn't happen, then put it in the ordinance. Same thing with the uh, property values. We're all so confident that nobody's going to lose property value, put it in the ordinance. That's how you make things legal and permanent. If you don't think it's going to happen, put it in the ordinance. Thank you. 
Harrison Township. Uh, I just want to say, number one, not all farmers are leaseholders. Uh, I've been around all county, like a lot of people, and pretty much all I discovered one is you can't really tell. I sit in your pickup truck next to one for 10 minutes and decide whether that's good or bad. There's a lot of unknowns here. There's very few people in this town that have lived close to a wind turbine. Uh, some of them have spoken here at these meetings. Uh, that should be worth something. There's just a lot of things we don't know. But the way this ordinance is written, it's a gamble. And if things would work out, maybe that's great. But I think it's a big gamble for us for things that we as a majority, we don't know anything about. Thank you.
Second. Motion by Coach Baker, second by Kenny Cronk. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I want to make a motion to dismiss. Thank you for listening to the Boss Hog of Liberty, which is part of the We Are Libertarians network. I am Chris Spangle, and I am the founder of this network. And I invite you to listen to all of our shows, which you can find at wearelibertarians.com or by searching for these in your podcatcher. The flagship show is the We Are Libertarians podcast, where we apply libertarian principles to current events. The Brian Nichols Show is a conversation amongst Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians, Independents, as they talk about what is happening in the news. And we have many other podcasts like The Chris Spangle Show, Upward, The Cost, Raw Audio Politics, Miranda's World, and Tad Talk, which is quite a ride. So check all of these out. Go to wearelibertarians.com and you can check out all of our great podcasts. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the We Are Libertarians Network. Get our other shows at wearelibertarians.com.